Lawyers of Reddit, what's the stupidest case you've been asked to take on, and did you? I had a client come and saying that he needed to sue Stu for robbing all his checks. When I asked him if Stu had a last name, he said no. When I asked him if he knew any Stu, he said no. When I asked him what proof he had that Stu was robbing him, he showed me all of his pay stubs. There were clear monthly deductions by Stu. As soon as I saw it, I knew. I asked do you have children? He said yes. I then told him your stew is the SKU, the support collection unit. They take money out of your check to pay for your child. Double quote. He left the office insisting that we needed to find Stu. Let me preface this. I had heard about the guy I'm going to mention below before I had actually met him. I thought this was an urban legend. Until he came into my office one day. A guy in his late 50s early 60s comes into the lobby area of my office and starts a commotion that freaks out the receptionist. I was the closest attorney to the lobby so I go out and talk to the guy. He was clearly mentally disturbed and presented the following story. Someone had implanted a device in his brain that was controlling his behavior. He believed it was being controlled by Baskin Robbins and a former mayor of Detroit. He believed they were forcing him to do random things like going to bars to drink taking the wrong turn when driving, forcing him to retire from his job, and a lot of very other intricate things. After asking him if he had seen any doctors regarding the implant he got really upset and said that he thought the doctors were in on it as well. After telling him I couldn't help him and suggesting that he find some new doctors, he asked me if I knew any lawyers who specialized in his kind of case. I often wonder if the lawyer I referred him to was able to help him. I'm a prosecutor. So I don't get hired to represent anyone, I work for the government, but I do have discretion over how the prosecution progresses, I. E. Deciding to proceed. Deciding what to offer in the event of a plea bargain. Deciding to withdraw the charges. Etc. Comma I had a case a few months ago where a man was charged with shoplifting. Turned out he was 70 years old. Had absolutely no criminal record. And had shoplifted a sandwich which he ate politely in the store. He honestly thought he had paid for it. I was so angry that he was ever charged in the first place. When I saw him in court. He was absolutely terrified. I withdrew the charges and wished him well. I have no idea how it progressed that far. I did insurance defense for a long time including insurance fraud investigations for insurance companies. You wouldn't believe how many people take a video inventory of their house only to have it mysteriously burned down the next day. You really can't fix stupid. I'm a lawyer. But this happened to a friend of mine. He got engaged. And apparently this pissed off his ex-GF. The ex-GF sued him for custody of their two cats and $500. 000 for something like the lost value of the cats because she claimed they were service animals. Hint. They were not at all service animals. Edit. Wow this got a lot of attention. So. To add to the story. One of the reasons my friend broke up with the ex-GF was because she had problems caring for the cats. Ignoring them. Forgetting to feed them while my friend was away. Etc. So her coming back for the cats was clearly all about the fact that my friend was suddenly engaged to someone else. When they went to court. The judge immediately threw out the $500.000 demand because it was ridiculous. Unfortunately. They were awarded joint custody of the cats. Which was this woman's way of staying in my friend's life. So he decided it was better if he just gave her the cats so he could be free of her. My dad is an in-house lawyer for a major American insurance company. He once spent an entire year trying to help deny insurance benefits for a painter who had stepped off his ladder onto a cat. Fallen down the stairs and become paralyzed. The insurance company was arguing that a cat was a commonly expected occupational hazard for a painter and that he was negligent in not checking for cats before stepping down. A whole year of his life over whether a cat is a known occupational hazard of house painting. Lawyer for 12 years. Client was charged with stealing a mobile toilet. After we won he told me he still owns it. 
The fucker has the thing in his backyard because he was lazy as fck. His office was nearby. Forced him to deliver it back at night. Jesus. Still offended that he lied to me me the whole time. I run a consumer advocacy firm. I had a client come in and tell me that he bought a product. And the company refused to honor the warranty after the product broke. I asked for details. And he just started screaming in my face asking if I was going to take his money or not. I decided then that I wasn't taking him on as a client. But I wanted to know what was going on. I convinced him to tell me what happened. Turns out he bought a computer back in the 1990s. It had just recently died. But not because it was old and just stopped working. It was slow. So he picked it up. And threw it out a two story window. And then he wanted to sue the manufacturer for breaking warranty. Edit. Well there goes my inbox. A guy found a rock in the middle of Melbourne CBD that he believed came from an underground volcano therefore he discovered the volcano and he owned the volcano and that the Melbourne City Council and indeed the Victorian government should pay him rent to live on top of his underground volcano. No no I did not take on the case. My father is a patent attorney. And when I was around 14 he told me about a guy who wanted to patent the iPhone 3 because aliens had given him the design for it. My father told him that if the aliens originally designed them they were the ones that had to patent it. Not him. Without going into too many details, had a guy that wanted to bring a class action against the company that made his underwear. Because he was convinced his underwear was the reason he had a crooked dick. He assured us that as soon as the jury saw his dick, they'd side with him. No. We didn't take it. Not really stupid but unbelievable. My friend at work. His girlfriend filed for divorce a few weeks ago. That's right. They aren't married and common law doesn't apply in WA state. They lived together for 5 years. She has a job. She isn't on the mortgage. And she left him a few months ago. There are no kids involved. They were never engaged. In the divorce she wants him to leave his house and she wants to move back in. She wants him to pay her 2800 a month for some reason. I referred him to my divorce attorney and now that attorney is probably going to represent him. The chick is nuts. She has already tried to get a restraining order against him that was dismissed. Worked in a law office where we defended the city. Police. Fire. Prisons. And M's employees from lawsuits. Had a guy call me and ask if he could shoot individuals from his window. I told the gentleman that we were not able to give him legal advice and highly suggested seeking outside counsel. He began to belittle me about how civil servants never take responsibility. Semicolon. The sad part about this story is when I asked him what do you mean? Shoot people from your window? He began to explain a situation in which he believed it could be possible that he would be in his kitchen making breakfast and would see individuals who clearly don't belong in his neighborhood shoving his neighbor into the trunk of a car. I asked the gentleman how do you know they're not his friends taking him to a bachelor party or horse playing? And he began screaming at me. I explained to him that this entire conversation could be considered premeditation if he ever did feel he had to shoot someone. None of the lawyers would take the phone call when he refused to take no as an answer from me. They continued to make jokes rather than seeing this was clearly a disturbed individual. He would not provide me with any of his details as I planned on requesting a wellness check on him. I'm not a lawyer but a family member once had a guy that wanted to sue a ladder company for racial discrimination because the warning sticker pictures were racially biased. The stick figure picture of the guy climbing the ladder correctly was a white stick figure with a black background and the picture describing injury incorrect ladder usage was a black stick figure with a white background and also a bright X over it if I remember correctly. From this he thought you could conclude that the ladder company was saying that black people are dumber more likely to fall off ladders. Well. The company wasn't even the ones who created the stickers. It was some governmental safety regulatory body which forces ladders to use the safety warnings stickers. Needless to say. It was never pursued. I worked in a homeless shelter and we had legal aid come once a week to help with fines etc. Lawyers were usually pretty green but good on them for working for free. 
One day one of them comes out of a meeting with one of our residents really wound up at the injustice of the world and how he was going to help our guy out. He went on to explain our resident had had both kidneys. His liver and a lung removed without consent. We just kinda all looked at him and after about a minute the penny dropped and he worked out he had just been sucked into the dude's delusion. We laughed street him. A lot. Dude called 911 about harassment from his neighbors. I arrived and he met me with a sordid tale of long-standing harassment involving his home being bugged by his neighbor all due to the fact that he knew that he was part of a major drug operation. He demanded that I, a lawyer, not a lawyer, take his case to sue his neighbor. When I explained to him 100 times I'm not a lawyer, I was met with the finest litany of insults. Needless to say by checking the caller's eyed. He lived at a very similar address name about 30 miles away. He wasn't the resident and that explained why he was also waiting for a locksmith. His drug lord neighbor was a 81 year old woman who was very happy her new neighbor was leaving and also adamant that Jesus would protect me. Didn't take the case cause I'm not a fking lawyer. Piggy slash 5. Zero. But it was an interesting report to write. Now but my mom's co-worker was always a drunken mess. One night. She had a lot to drink and was at a subway for some reason, and she got really uncomfortable because these guys walked up to her saying mama Sita. She got terrified and ran off. As she ran she trespassed private property. Tripped into a steep hole and shattered her face. She tried to sue the town for not patching up the hole but they refused because she was drunk in public and trespassing. Not a lawyer. But a paralegal and a former judicial assistant. There was a case in our court where a lady went to a big cat exotic animal sanctuary, lions and tigers and such. She stuck her hand inside the cage and a tiger bit her finger. She sued and won a large sum of money. The jury found the sanctuary liable and not her. WTF. You stuck your freaking hand in a freaking tiger cage. I have to imagine that that verdict was based on the fact that the tiger was able to get into position to bite fingers if someone stuck their hand in there. If she was able to do that. So to our children probably. Who aren't expected to make such judgment calls. Hence. The sanctuary is liable. Just my guess. It's a bit bizarre. But I can see that one going that way with a good lawyer. I was court appointed to represent someone on a child support case. I had no choice but to take it on. The guy claimed he wrote down $20.000 inches on a piece of paper. Signed his name next to it. And then mailed it off to child support. Making it a negotiable instrument under the UCC. He also claimed that the negotiable instrument was considered accepted under the UCC unless the state attorney handed the instrument back to him. State had no idea where this paper was. Or if it even existed. Close bracket. Every hearing began with him claiming the court had no jurisdiction over him because his name was in all capital letters on the case caption. And me asking to withdraw immediately thereafter. After several hearings. The judge allowed me to withdraw. But still forced me to stand by to protect his rights. Double quote. Been a defense attorney since 2001. I've seen some messed up shti and dealt with truly bizarre cases. My boss was murdered by a business magnate in early 2002 because she had been snooping around in his affairs. Trying to find out why he f kept up her mom's life several years prior. After it was all over. I ended up taking custody of her younger sister for a while. And we had kind of a neat working partnership. She was a bit bizarre though. Was into mysticism and fortune telling. All spiritual shti like that. In 2007 my career was derailed for a while as I was accused of presenting false evidence and the bar moved to revoke my badge. Thankfully this decision has since been overturned. Thanks in no small part to an old friend of mine, who's now a prosecutor, pulling some strings. Over the course of my career I've also had to cross examine a parrot. Defend an orca on suspicion of manslaughter. And clear the name of a circus performer that the court believed actually F. King flew away from the crime scene. I swear this is all true. It's absurd. But the money was on the table. And hey. I was broke. So I played along every time. I'm a NY state workers comp attorney. 
had a potential client call who worked for NY City Transit. He got into an argument with a passenger who at the end of the argument spit on the potential client. It is now two months later and he is out of work due to post-traumatic stress disorder. He calls to see if I want to take the case. I hate when people are out of work for ridiculous reasons so I try pleading with the guy, probably make 60-70k a year, to go back to work. He says the work psychologist won't release him. This is because he keeps telling them he can't return to work and because there is a subjective component to psych evaluation so if he says he can't work that is what they will sometimes put. He gets upset I won't take the case and says you don't understand no one has ever spit on you. I was spit on once in an ice hockey altercation and it did not cause me to miss two months of work. I declined his case. Potential client wanted to sue the local strip club because she was manhandled out by the bouncers after she had ordered takeout fried chicken, I know. Apparently this is a thing, and the cashier wouldn't accept her credit card. She failed to leave out the part that she assaulted the cashier after complaining it was taking too long for her chicken to be ready and then proceeded to assault the bouncer and ended up dislocating her own shoulder from resisting getting thrown out. We didn't take the case. Not a lawyer. But I work for an online retailer and some very unhappy customers will threaten legal action over what most would think is a pretty petty issue. One interesting example was a delivery arriving on time. And the customer wanted a refund for bad delivery experience. She wanted it to turn up a day late so she could keep it and demand a refund, something records show she asked about fairly regularly. And of course we said. Nope. She said she'd lawyer up as she had expectation of keeping the item and having a refund. So we sent her our legal action email so she could forward it to her lawyer. I sometimes wonder if she ever did go to a lawyer at any point. Edit. Clarification. Now but my boss had the dumbest defense I've ever seen to getting a ticket. She got gas before coming into work one night. We work night. She must have turned her lights off while getting gas and she pulled back onto the road. Drove a few blocks. And got pulled over for not having her lights on. Her defense was it was only a few minutes. She was going to bring the gas receipt with the time date on it and compare it to the ticket she got to show that it was only a few minutes. I hated my boss so I just laughed and went back to work. I can't believe she went to court and actually used the defense of I broke the law but it wasn't for very long. I know this will get buried. I am a lawyer. But I don't do litigation. My stupidest case involves my neighbor. He sued me in magistrate's court, small claims. Our houses came with Bermuda grass. He changed his to fescue. My grass has slowly spread back into his yard. Which is what Bermuda does. He has a dead spot in his grass right between our houses. He claims that my painter killed his grass when he washed out his brushes and the water ran into his yard. This was latex paint. The dead spot is no more than 2 square feet and it wasn't caused by heavily diluted latex paint water. He presented me with an invoice to replace 100 square feet of his grass. I ignored him and he sued me. I have lived next door to him for 10 years. We have never had a pleasant conversation. I am a lawyer and one of the first cases I worked on when I was clerking for a judge was a woman who had a service squirrel whose apartment complex did not want to let her keep the squirrel as they did not allow pets of any kind. I think the apartment did allow registered service animals but the state doesn't register, certify, comma squirrels because they are classified as wild animals. I think the apartment complex won with a pre-trial motion. But honestly the woman had a great case if only the squirrel could be counted by the state as a service animal. The squirrel did tons of stuff for her including turning on off lights. Getting her medicine. And emotional support. Pictures and videos were included in the evidence packet, as it was public record. The other clerks and I copied it and sent it around to our friends. This was almost 10 years ago and is still my favorite case just because it was so fun. Back maybe 10-12 years ago a case made headlines in the American Bar Association magazine because a dog tried to sue an invisible fence installing company for causing injury. The owners of the dog sued for their own damages and as a guardian and next friend of the dog for its damages. Pain and suffering. This is the same way a parent would bring suit on behalf of a minor child. For instance. 
Close bracket. Anyway I was practicing law in the mid-sized Ohio county where the lawsuit was brought and for a little while there was a sense that everyone in the country was laughing, except probably the dog. The dog's owner and apparently counsel for the dog. Close bracket. I'll start off by saying that I'm an assistant prosecutor in a rural county. I had an alleged victim seek assault charges on a pilot who was crop dusting a cornfield near his home. The victim claimed that the pilot woke him up from his mid-morning nap by buzzing his house. Naturally. Victim goes outside and flips the pilot the bird and then claims the pilot flew directly over top of him and dropped a load of the dusting chemicals directly onto him as some form of revenge. Victim went to the hospital to seek treatment from chemical exposure, he didn't have chemical exposure. It turns out the FAA has strict standards for crop dusters and the type of equipment that must be on their planes. This pilot in particular had a GPS unit that could track the flight path of the plane and differentiate when the pilot is dropping the pesticide and when he is not. I was given convincing evidence that the pilot never flew over the victim's house, or yard, with his chute open. No charges were filed. Damn it I'm late so this will get buried. One of the few stories I can tell was the time where this young airman came in with a sob story about how he wanted to sue his ex fiance and get his ring back. Military law doesn't really deal with civil suits so we referred him to a civilian attorney. However. During the course of our talking to him it comes out the girl has already left. Because she was 18 and her dad was the one star on the base who just changed station the previous summer. Apparently. Airman dipshit had cheated on the general's daughter and she broke off the engagement and kept the $5,000 ring. We explained that while technically. Yes. Some states can totally view this gift as a promise of some sort, I'm not the most up to speed on this law. And this was a while ago, his likelihood of successfully suing a general's daughter while he was stationed in Japan was pretty low. On the side. I do pro bono work for a local lawyer in the library program. One lady came in for help with her car accident lawsuit. She was suing her insurance company who had paid for her pose paid for car. And actually gave her $2000 more than blue book. She was suing her own insurance for the full value of the car she had to buy to replace the paid for pose. Of course. Her new car was at least $20 k more. I told her there was no reason an insurance company would pay for her new car. They didn't have to replace a paid in full car as she insisted they should. Doing legal aid is great because you can tell them you're conflicted from taking their crazy case. Edit to clarify I just do this on the side to help out. Close bracket. Guy calls up for us to do an unfair dismissal. He was working in a rural area living in a work camp. One day he has be beaching himself some fish and gets into an argument with a group of Cambodian co-workers who are taking up too many tables. He claims one of the Cambodians dropped a knife on the ground which he took as a threat. He picks up the knife begins waving it at the group and says how do you like being threatened with a knife? Double quote. He ends up getting sacked for serious misconduct and wants us to pursue an unfair dismissal because the Cambodian didn't get sacked and he started it because those Cambodians can't be trusted. Unfortunately because he is a member of our union we have to at least run the case to conciliation. We had to beg to get his conciliation moved because he is currently on holiday in Cambodia. Not a lawyer. But worked in accounting for a law firm a couple years back. Had this woman trying to sue an automated car wash company for their machine malfunctioning and damaging her car and injuring her. These car washes you're supposed to park your car on the conveyor belt and automatically get pulled through the wash room where different equipment is used in cleaning the car. Initially they took the case before the company sent the CCTV and we saw the woman straight up plow through the car wash machine when she claimed to be parked and going along the belt. We all gathered round one of the computers and had a good chuckle at that one, 